into dirt riding, it's usually not a case of will you get hurt, but when. Protective gear helps a lot with preventing or minimising injury, but there's a lot of debate about how far do you go. Fully kitted out, the issues can be it gets bloody expensive, limited range of movement, discomfort, the heat in summer, and of course the extra weight. You need to weigh up all these factors and make your choices. This is just a general overview and we'll provide links to more detailed vids as we make them. So let's start with what most riders see as the essentials. Helmets. See our vids below for more info. This is a quick summary. The good news, any helmet approved by a major helmet standard does a reasonable job of protecting you. Yes, even the cheap ones but there's a lot you can do to increase the level of protection. Make sure the helmet's a snug fit. See how far you can pull it off your head. No part of your head should be exposed. Dual and variable density liners are a very important new safety feature to protect your brain from moderate impacts. Helmet standards only test for near lethal impacts, not the smaller ones that can still leave you with a brain injury. Which helmet standard? They are all seriously out of date, but the general consensus is the European standard is the least out of date and probably the best one. Rotational forces are a serious issue the standards barely touch on. Some manufacturers like 6D are addressing this in their designs now, and others are beginning to use the MIPS or Philips systems. Check for padding on the inside of your chin bar. This is important to reduce broken jaws or teeth in a frontal impact. Helmet weight only starts to become a safety issue past one and a half kilograms, but a lighter helmet is always less tiring. If you ride in hot weather, good ventilation keeps you refreshed and therefore safer. Boots. See our video below for more detail. Lower leg injuries are extremely common. We recommend get the best boots you can afford. Try these basic tests to see how well they'll protect you. And remember, a major problem with cheaper boots, they will seem to provide good protection at first, but they're stiff. Once you wear them in and they're comfortable, try these flex tests again. Chances are they will be flopping all over the place. In the long run, top quality boots last so much longer and they work out cheaper. Knee guards. Some riders don't use these. Most of us see them as essential. They are cheap, you barely notice them when you're riding. And just try dropping to your knees quickly on concrete and see how much it hurts. The ideal, of course, is proper knee braces. We'll cover these later. Goggles. These are a no-brainer. The huge risk with wearing sunglasses is that a stick or branch will want to gouge out your eye. Ah, I see all the goggles. Ah. Even if there are no trees around, you can crash and have something stick into your face. Gloves, another no-brainer. It can be worth having a bit of armour on the knuckles and fingers, especially if you aren't using a full set of hand guards on the handlebars. That's what we would see as the absolute essentials. Now what about the protective gear that many see as optional? Knee braces offer a lot more protection than basic knee guards. Knee injuries are extremely common with bone fractures, blood vessel and nerve damage, and injury to the four main ligaments. An excellent study revealed that proper braces halve your chances of knee injury. Don't be fooled by cheap, so-called knee braces. You do need to spend the big bucks to get decent ones. Neck braces. There is a lot of debate about these due to so little information. As far as I can tell, there are only three basic research projects that have occurred. LIAT has released their findings, but some question this because the designer and manufacturer was a key author in the research too. Acherbis isn't releasing their research paper, but it appears that their findings were very similar to Liet's research, which is encouraging. We could only find one other study that doesn't actually involve one of the neck brace manufacturers, so is properly objective and independent. 
None of us are experts. We will not claim to make any conclusions. But after reading all of this research, it would appear that a combination of the correct helmet and neck brace setup will prevent some injuries, only reduce other types. In other circumstances, it will just change the location of the injury and other impacts it won't help at all. If you opt for a neck brace, make sure it works with your armour and your helmet. Body armour. There is so much available here, but no research that we could find for off-road riders. The absolute basics here would start with a set of elbow guards. Next would be roost guards and chest protectors, which usually allow air to circulate and keep the rider cool. Then there are pressure suits or full armour. Many riders swear by these, but of course others find them too restrictive or especially too hot in summer. If it is hot, don't wear a jersey on top. All you will do is cook yourself. Some manufacturers, such as Zack Speed, allow lots of ventilation and also attach a backpack for hydration. Padded pants. Most off-road pants have some padding for the hip. This is a high impact area, so the more the better. Some riders wear padded underwear as well for extra protection. Mouth guards. These are more of a motocross development due to the fairly high rate of facial injuries. I don't know how applicable it is to everyday dirt riding. This is an interesting diagram. It's from a road riding perspective. But I think these impact zones should be reasonably similar to the ones that we dirt riders encounter. And this is a breakdown of typical motocross injuries, which again should have some applicability to dirt riders. And in our reading, these were just some interesting comments from experienced riders and people generally regarded as experts. So there we have it, a basic overview of protective gear for off-road riders. I'll leave a space here if more info comes up as we do some more detailed vids over the next few months. And remember guys, ride safe.